We're back testing more factory Creality upgrades, and this time it's the Creality BL Touch Kit. It's no secret that I love modifying 3D printers, and especially this budget Ender 3. Creality are now making their own upgrades, and in the last video, I tested their new mainboard, the 1.1.4, that came with TMC 2208 silent stepper motor drivers. In this video, we're going to be testing their new BL Touch based auto bed leveling kit. This kit is available directly from Creality's website, which is where I ordered it from, and it usually goes for US $50. It comes with quite a few things, including a BL Touch, pin 27 board, a BL Touch extension cable, a metal bracket, as well as a programmer that negates the need for a bootloader. And when I unboxed it, I found all of these things, plus the instructions and some mounting bolts. Now, big credit to Creality because they've got a genuine BL Touch instead of a clone. The pin 27 board is well labeled for when we plug our wiring in later on as is the USB ISP programmer. The mounting bracket is of sufficient quality and really we've got a lot for our money here. Okay, so all of this is actually really good value, but how does the experience compare to doing it yourself? I've done BL Touch conversion to this before and I've made several videos on different ways to do that. Therefore, I feel I'm in a good position to let you know how this process compares to those that I've done before. Spoiler alert, there is good and there's definitely some bad. I've definitely had some issues, so what we're going to do is to follow these official instructions and I'll tell you the solutions to problems that I faced as we go. Our first step is to update the firmware. So we're gonna take our ISP programmer and plug in the little adapter and there's only one direction that that can insert thanks to the tab on the side. The next job is to read the labels on the side of the adapter and locate the side that has ground as well as VCC. We're going to unplug the ribbon cable connector that goes to the LCD and that will create the room to plug in our adapter with the VCC and ground side facing outwards to the edge of the board. Now we can plug the program into our computer and switch to the software. If you go to the shop page for this product, there'll be two links there. And for an Ender 3, we want the Creality V1 firmware link. Once you click that, it'll take you to a Dropbox where there's a pre-compiled hex file to flash as well as the software that you'll need. Unfortunately, I couldn't get anything to download. I'm not sure what the problem was. Fortunately, on the download page away from the shop and on the main website, there's the required files that we need. Unzip the files and locate the prog ISB folder. You'll notice that all of the documentation is not in English. And because this is a cloned programmer, it's not compatible with the usual AVR dude software. So we're stuck using prog ISP. This really means we're at the mercy of the Creality instructions. We start the main program by starting prog ISP.exe. A warning error that we can't decipher is an ominous start. Our first job is to make sure we have AT Mega 1284p selected from our chip menu. We're now going to click the three dots in the far right hand side of the interface. At the bottom in the config big tab, we're given three values that we need to enter. The low value should be DC, the high value D6, and the X value FD. These are programmable fuses for the microcontroller. After this, we're meant to click right. And when I did this, I encountered my first error, a chip enable program error. There's nothing in the instructions, but I eventually worked out I need to have the printer powered on for this to work. After this, I loaded back up the software and when I clicked right, I had a message in the log that the fuse bits were written successfully. The downloaded firmware hex is pretty special. It's inside a folder, which is inside a folder, which is inside a folder. And then there's a subfolder with some Marlin source files, but it doesn't have all of them, including the main.ino file, which means you can't edit anything. Back in prog ISP, on the right hand side, we're gonna click load flash, and then we'll navigate through our folders and select our hex file. Now the instructions say that all we need to do is click auto, but when you click this, you will have a success message in the log, but trust me, nothing has actually happened. This is not listed in the instructions and the picture is way too small to see, but I could eventually work out that I needed to tick chip erase, program flash, program fuse, and then when I hit the auto button, everything finally worked as it was meant to all along. 
The whole thing takes around 20 seconds and you should get a proper confirmation message this time. This is what you should see once the flash is successful. Now I have a few mods already, including a BL Touch, but don't worry, I'm going to remove them for this install and you should be able to follow along even if your printer is stock. We're going to take our BL Touch and BL Touch bracket and use the two M3 by 6mm screws to attach the probe as shown here. Undo the two bolts to the top left of your hot end cooling duct. They're in the same place regardless of whether you're stock or aftermarket like me. The BL Touch mounting bracket is going to go in the same place and that is over the top of the fan shroud whether it be the metal factory one or my printed Hero Me aftermarket one. In either case, there's two M3 by 8mm bolts that come in the kit for mounting this bracket to the gantry. Plug in the extension cable for the BL Touch and this only goes in one direction and then use the supplied cable ties to attach the extension cable to the outside of the existing wiring all the way down into the back cavity that leads to the main board. The hardest part is now over so it's time to unplug the ribbon cable for the LCD and introduce the pin 27 board. It's time to plug in the BL Touch extension cable and it needs to be in the correct orientation to avoid blowing anything up. Read the label on the pin 27 board and plug it in as shown here. Please double check everything is aligned to avoid disaster. The pin 27 board now plugs into the space where the LCD ribbon cable was. Take care to make sure it's centered because it's possible to plug it in misaligned. The plug for the original LCD now goes on top of the pin 27 board. Double check everything is seated firmly and then we turn our attention to the final plug. On the main board there are three end stop plugs all in a row. We need to find and unplug the one that has the Z label. The new plug is red and it should plug straight in. After it's plugged in, please double check that the black wire from the new plug faces the other black wires and the white wire faces the other white wires of the plugs either side around it. Installation summary, let's start with the good. Having this pre-made metal mount that didn't require any 3D printed parts and should be pretty robust and strong moving forward is definitely a nice touch. The length of the extension cable is spot on for this Ender 3 printer. The fact that you don't need to do the added step of burning a boot ladder thanks to this programmer is pretty nice. And finally, the pin 27 board that comes with this printer had all of the pins matching so no swaps were needed and everything plugged right in. On to the bad then, and the obvious thing was the lack of documentation and consistency with the software that goes with the programmer. For many people, this is going to be the most daunting step and they're probably going to stress over bricking their main board. Hopefully the little tips I put into this video can help get you over the line if you're having some issues. That's the installation out of the way, so how does it actually compare to use and to print with? We're going to look at the final calibration and do some test prints as well. First things first, whatever slicing software you're using, you need to locate the start G code, add a space after G28 for homing all axes and add a G29 for auto bed leveling. Select Auto Home from the LCD and it is normal for it to home X and Y first before it travels to the middle of the bed before it homes Z. The first time I home I always do it from a high height and I put my finger there to test that it's going to work properly. Assuming it does you can re-home and this time let it go all the way down. Testing it with your finger will give you time to turn off the printer and avoid a collision if something is wired incorrectly. We're following the Creality instructions here and we're going to use the LCD to manually move the Z axis down after homing until it just pinches a normal piece of paper. Once it does, we need to observe the LCD and write down the number written on it. For me, that was negative 2.5. Now we go to Z offset from the control menu and mine was set at zero. We're meant to add these two values together, which for me equals minus 2.5 and we set the Z offset for that, and that should ensure, according to the instructions, a perfect first layer. After you've set this value, don't forget to go back to the control menu and then store it to the EEPROM. When you start your first print job, you'll notice that it probes a 3x3 grid across the bed and it's agonizingly slow. Creality have been extremely conservative with their settings when they've set up the Marlin firmware here. And that was super frustrating because their calculations for setting the Z offset were incorrect. It took me about five goes of testing, discovering the nozzle wasn't close enough to the bed, lowering the Z offset, restarting the print, 
and doing this over and over until I finally got the right value. It was much lower than what was anticipated, coming in at minus 3.6. With that slow probing, it took me about half an hour of restarting prints until I finally had the right Z offset, and then after that, the machine was reliable and consistent. That process was so annoying. Probing is so stupidly slow compared to how it could be, and the method of setting the Z offset is so inefficient. Normally with a BL Touch and a newer version of Marlin, you set Z baby stepping and you tie it to the Z offset. Therefore, as the first layer is going down, you simply twist the dial until it's just right, and then you store that in the EEPROM and it's there forever. It's all accomplished in one print, no hassle at all. What's frustrating is that this is such an easy thing to get right if you have any knowledge of Marlin at all. And you won't be surprised to know that there's something else where they've really dropped the ball. When I tested this printer, it didn't have thermal runaway protection either. I just don't understand how Creality and many other 3D printing companies just continually get these simple things wrong. Like the upgraded version 1.1.4 mainboard, the hardware represents great value in this kit, but the software and firmware have definite issues and they're a real letdown. For that reason, I would only recommend that you buy this kit if you're gonna use their software to flash a different hex file from a newer version of Marlin with all of the safety features enabled. For that reason, you'll find a link in the description to a pre configured hex file that you can use with the programmer just like I've shown you in this video and it will have thermal runaway protection enabled as well as faster, more efficient probing. Now one final and very important note, this kit actually shipped with a BL Touch version 3 and as it stands with this printer, that's actually incompatible. You can see that with all the same wiring and the same firmware that it just doesn't trigger when it's coming down to either home or probe the bed. Therefore, I filmed all of this video with an existing BL Touch version 2, which I already had on hand. The good news is I've done some research and in my next video, I plan to present a solution for all of those people who've recently got a BL Touch version 3 that's incompatible with their printer. If you've previously bought this kit from Creality, I'd love to read how it went for you in the comments. There were certainly some pretty scathing reviews on their website. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.